Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will start a new part uh, in the course Math Plus and Problems, the part which will be about matrices. So this is matrices 01, where I will talk about using matrix as operator in the vector space. Now this course is part of the uh, website unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture and all other lectures of uh, the course uh, on the website because every lecture has uh, a very detailed description, basically like a textbook. So whatever I'm presenting you as a lecture is written uh, and it's on the same screen actually, the video and, and the textual part of it. Um, so it, it gives you kind of a different perspective uh, on the same material. And it's also very helpful for, for instance, you like didn't catch something during the lecture and you can read it again and you will be clarified, so to speak. Or maybe I'm missing something during the lecture and uh, you will find it in the textual part of it. Um, the website uh, totally free. There are no advertisements, so it's all knowledge for your consumption. Sign-in is not mandatory unless you are participating in some teacher-student relationship where I do need to establish this relationship, I need IDs. Um, but that's all, all I need is just ID in this particular case. But if you're learning by yourself, you don't really have to sign in, just use it. Uh, also, this website contains some other courses. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first of all, there is a prerequisite course for Math Plus and problems. The prerequisite course is called Math for Teens and that's basically kind of a high school level. Math may be a little bit higher than that and maybe a little bit more challenging for you. But that's a, a, a theoretical material which is definitely needed for understanding of whatever I'm talking in Math Plus and Problems course. Um, like for example today we will talk about matrices I will not repeat basically um, all these uh, different uh, properties of ma matrices, maybe just very, very briefly, um, but in theory I presume that you know what matrix actually is. Okay, what else? Well, that's basically it for introduction. Um, so let's get to the material. Okay, so first of all, you have learned from other sources what matrix actually is, but I will just very, very very briefly repeat it. Matrix is basically a table, that's how we viewed it before. A table of some numbers, this is matrix with two rows and two columns, um, and uh, basically you can have any number of rows and any number of uh, uh, columns. So basically we will do something like this, I will use m n times n when I would like to say that matrix A has m rows and n columns. That's it. Now, we also know the basic operations with matrices. For example, you can add two matrices together, but they must have the same dimensions, the same number of rows and the same number of columns and the addition is actually um, adding every element to a corresponding element so it will be exactly of the same dimensions matrix where every element c i j is a combination of i i j plus b i j this is element from this this is element from this indices are the same I is changing from 1 to M and uh, J is changing for uh, 1 to N. So that's the simplest kind of a form, but because it's defined this way, we obviously see that this is commutative operation, because this is commutative. Okay? Now, the multiplication of the matrix by a, some scalar, some constant, by real number, whatever, K times A M plus N, M N would be again some kind of a matrix M, M times N, so it doesn't change the dimension, 
and every element bij again is by element it's k times ij and obviously these are commutative too because these are commutative we don't really introduce any kind of mixture of different um, elements of these matrices so um, and also again for the same reason we can say that there is a distributive law if you will multiply sum of two matrices of the same dimension by constant that would be plus k b m times n so exactly the same thing and it all follows from here this is very very simple thing okay now we also know a little bit more complicated operations which is multiplication now the multiplication of two matrices is something which is defined a little bit more in a little bit more complex way let's say you have matrix m times n so it's m rows and n columns and the matrix b is supposed to have the same number of rows as the number of columns of matrix um, a and any number of columns and we are talking about multiplication of these two matrices now that is defined a little bit more complex so the resulting would be m times k so number of columns of a should be equal to number of rows of b now the resulting matrix will have rows from a uh, number of rows from a and number of columns from uh, from k so middle index disappears basically and how is it, it, it accomplished well c uh, let's call it I, I, G. now this is basically a combination of i's row from a uh, let's call it this way i's rows from a times uh, j's columns from b so how do we combine them this is uh, one row of n elements so you can consider it as a vector and this uh, this is the column so it has n elements so you also can consider it so it's a i one etc a i n times b uh, j no sorry b1 j etc b n j so i's row and j's column from b both have n elements and we will multiply them as basically like a vector pro like like a scalar product of vectors which is a i1 times b 1j plus a i2 times b 2j plus etc plus plus a i n times b n j so again my i j's element of this matrix is a scalar product of um, i's row from a which has n elements and uh, j's column from b which is also n elements so that's the definition of multiplication uh, again you should know this from the previous course i just repeat this but what is important is that the product of two matrices is not commutative so you cannot reverse order well in this particular case 
you see we have to have the same number of um, columns uh, in A and uh, number of rows in B. If you reverse, if these numbers are different, if M and K are different, then basically the whole thing is impossible. But even if they are all the same, and we will usually use all the matrices which are which are square matrices, so they have n times n, n columns and n rows. Even in this case, if you will multiply these two matrices, and this is also n, plus, n times n, even in this case, generally speaking, you cannot reverse the order. Now, this will be a little bit later in the, in the lecture, I'll talk about this. But meanwhile, let's consider a different case. Let's consider this case. First of all, we will talk about only square matrices, so it's n times n. And I will multiply it by another matrix, which multiply means it has to have n rows, but it has only one columns, and I will not use the second index at all. So basically it will be like a11, A12, A21, A22 matrix times, let's say, B1 and B2. The same number of rows. Now, this is a square matrix. In this case, n is equal to 2. And I have a, basically a matrix which contains only a column. Now, any matrix which contains only one column can be basically viewed as a vector and if numbers are real then would be in n-dimensional Euclidean space uh, of uh, n-vectors. We talked about n-vectors before. So basically I'm trying right now to bring together two concepts, the matrices and vectors. But in this particular case, let's see what happens. If I'm using n times n and n times 1, which means one column, as a result I will have something which is, again, and uh, it, it will have n rows and only one column, right? But let me put one here, then one here will be here. The common index n, n disappears and left and right number of rows of A and number of columns in, in, in U will remain. So it's still one column, so let me just get rid of this second index, we don't need it, it's always one. So we will have another vector, an element of Rn, in this case n is equal to 2. So how can it be viewed? So multiplication by a matrix, multiplication of a vector, well, which is actually a column vector. Okay, multiplication of a column vector, if the matrix is on, on the left, will result in another column vector, another member of um, n-dimensional Euclidean space. Now, it can be viewed as transformation of this vector into this vector. It's operation of transformation. So, but my point is that the square matrix n by n applied to n-dimensional Euclidean vector space will actually act like an operator in that particular space. It will convert or transform one vector into another. So it's a transformation. Transformation is sometimes called operation, and in this case the matrix A can be called operator. And that's basically what I meant in the name of this lecture, matrix as operator in Rn. So matrices as applied basically in this particular way, as a multiplication by vectors, they produce another vector and they can be called operators. And my, again, my, my purpose of this lecture is to marry these two concepts. The matrix 
and the linear space Rn. Now, we were talking about abstract vector spaces before in the part of this course called vectors. And I'm not talking about abstract vector space because matrices are quite concrete. I'm talking about only vector space Rn. But this matrix, matrix A acts as an operator. And let's just see what kind of operator this is. So these are presented as problems actually in this particular uh, in this particular lecture. So problem A is proof that A is linear transformation. So A is linear transformation. No, but I mean just very briefly what does it mean linear transformation? Well if you have two different uh, vectors then the transformation applied to their sum, namely a times, let's say, u plus v, should be equal to sum of their transformation. Now here a means a matrix n times n, u means column vector of uh, n rows, v also, and that's why we have to basically uh, say something like this because combination of two column vectors of n rows will be another column vector of n rows. Multiplication of A by the column number of n rows will be another uh, mm, column vector. And these are also column vector and column vector of n rows and some of them will be exactly the same. So it makes sense. Now all we have to do is to prove something like this. Now at the same time linear means another thing. A if you have some uh, um, scalar, some real number, multiplied by u, then it would be the same as a times k times u, where this is multiplication of matrix by a scalar, or it would be the same as k times a times u. So that's what linearity means. Now, all these properties are absolutely trivial if you will go to a components. Like, for example, what is component of this one? Well, it's, uh, let's say, u uh, i plus v i. And if you will multiply by matrix using whatever the uh, multiplication we have, like in this particular case, for example, of two dimensions, what is the product? Well, c1 is equal to well, it's a first row and first uh, column, which is A11B1 plus A12B2. And what's a C2? That's the second row and the first column, which is A21B1 plus A22B2. So as soon as you do this, all these linear transformations becomes absolutely trivial. There is absolutely no problem with uh, it's, it's like edging two matrices uh, it's component by component in this ca case it's a little bit more complex because a combination of two things but it's still very easy to prove and uh, I don't really spend any time on this you will do it yourself if you want to and they do suggest you to do it basically because it's really simple thing to do now what's more important is and more interesting actually is an associated one so what is associated in this particular case? Not associative law which involves matrix and the scalar, but associative law which involves matrix times matrix. This is much less trivial thing. So if you will multiply mat mat matrix, if you will do the operator first, First, you do the B matrix as operator, which, which means you multiply it by, by a column vector. You will get another column vector. And then you apply matrix A to the result of this. It will be the same as if you will multiply two matrices by the rules of mat multiplication of two matrices. This is n times n, and this is n times n, right? So both will be n times n, and the result will be n times n. 
and now you can apply results to you and you will have exactly the same thing. So basically it, 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 it's like you apply one transformation and as a result of this you will have something and then you apply another transformation to the result of this. Now that's one way or another way is you combine two transformations using the multiplication of the matrices as a rule, how to combine two transformations. You just multiply two matrices and you will still have the same result. So this is much less trivial. Now all the details are in writing in this particular um, notes for this particular lecture, but I will just do very, very quickly something. Let's say this is U and this is V. Then um, V1 is equal to B. I'll do it only for two-dimensional case because everything else will be similar. B11 U1 plus B12 U2 and V2 is equal to B21 U1 plus B2 2 U2. Right? Let me check. Okay. Now, if I will apply A to this, well, it would be now A is A11, A12, etc. So it would be A11 times V1 plus A12 times V2. That would be the result. Let's call it W1, which is equal to A11, A11, V11, U1 plus A11, B12. U2 plus A12 A12 uh, U1 no, sorry, B, B1 B21 B21 U1 plus A12 B22 U2 Okay, this is my first and the second one, W2, would be equal to that's uh, um, A12 V1 plus A22 uh, V2, right? So A11 A12 a21, A22, multiply. So the second one would be A21, V1, A22, yeah, that's right. And that's equal to, uh, I will uh, use the V1 and V2. So it's A12, B11, U1, plus A12, B12, U2, plus A22. V2, B1 to 1, U1, plus A2, 2, B2, 2, U2. Now, obviously we can combine, uh, and if we will combine, we will see the following. That W1 is equal to I will combine U1, so it would be A11 B11 plus A12 B12 U1 plus A11 B12 plus A12 B22 U2. Okay, and W2 is equal to, again, I will uh, factor out U1, would be, would be 1, 2, B1, 1, plus A2, 2, B2, 1, U1, plus A1, 2, B1, 2. Is that right? U2 plus 2, 2. B two two B two. Okay. So that's the result. Now but if you will look at this carefully you will see 
that this is basically a multiplication this is your vector u1, u2 and here you have some matrix C which has this as C11 C12, C13 sorry, C21 and C22 where C11 is this So this is C11, this is C12, this is C21, and this is C22. But if you will multiply A times B, where A is A by 1, A by 2, A and 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 two one and uh, A, A, A22, times B, which has the same similar thing, you will get exactly this which means that C, my matrix C, is exactly the combination of A and B. <coughs> and that's why A times B times U is equal to AB times U. You will have exactly the same result. Now, this is in two-dimensional case. It can be very easily expanded to n-dimensional case. The only thing is, these would be longer. It's two, uh, two, 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 two uh, uh, elements in this sum, it would be n elements. It would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, etc., etc. So, I mean, it can be done with a sigma sign, if you wish to, but in any case, I decided not to, to, to go into this, because it just will be confusing, quite frankly, without much, much more information than this. But here you see that just rearranging the summation uh, you will you will get basically exactly the same result. So it's associative. Okay, and the last thing is with these operators that the operators cannot be applied in any sequence. So we know that we can do one and then another, or we can combine operators in the same order, as I was just saying. So a times b times u is equal to a b times u. But a b times u is not equal to b times a u. So there is no commutative law, only associative. Now, how to prove this? Well, very easily. Let me just make some kind of an example where this is not true. Very simple thing. Okay, I have it 1, 2, 3, 4. This is my first matrix, this is A, and matrix B would be minus 1, 2, minus 3, 4. So, what's the result of this multiplication? First row by first column, this is my element 1, 1. So, it's 1 times minus 1, it's minus 1, 2 times minus 3, it's minus 6, so it would be minus 7. Now, the element 1, 2. So that's a one row, one, the first row and the second column. 1 times 2, 2, 2 times 4, 8, so the sum is 10. Now, the element 2, 1 of this matrix, it's a second row and the first column. 3 times minus 1, minus 3, 4 times minus 3, minus 12, it's minus 15. And finally, second row times second column. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 4 is 16, sum is 22. Okay, now let's do in a reverse order. Minus 2, 2, minus 3, 4, times 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, first row, first column, minus 1 times 1, it's minus 1, plus 2 times 3, 6, so it's 5. First row, second column, minus 1, minus 2, plus 8, it's 6. Minus 3 times 1, it's minus 3, uh, and 4 times 3 is 12, so it's 9. 
and uh, second row and second column minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 4 times 4 is 16 so it's 10 I mean it's completely different matrix so a completely different result now and obviously since the results matrix are different obviously you should expect a completely different transformation of vector space of n vectors using this matrix than this matrix take for example any, any, any vector just as an example to prove that this is a different transformation let's take the vector 1 0 multiplied in both cases what will be here minus 7 times 1 is minus 7 10 times 0 is so it's minus 7 minus 15 times 1 is minus 15 22 times 0 so it's minus 15 okay so vector 1 0 is transformed by this matrix into minus 7 minus 15 and for the same reason you will have 5 times 1 which is 5 6 times 0 is 0 and 9 times 9 9 and 0 so it's 9 so the same vector is converted by this matrix into this by this matrix into this so matrices are different and results are different so it's different transformation that's why a times b and b times a and a times b and b times a completely different things this is a b u as we have proven before and this is b a u so this is equal this is a, just basically associative law and this is associative law but in between they are not equal because a b not equal to b a the result of multiplication is different so my purpose was basically to introduce you to a concept of matrix as operator the square matrix n by n as an operator in the Euclidean and dimensional space, vector space, which we kind of researched and learned a lot in the previous part of the course, which was dedicated to vectors. So matrices is just next thing. So first we introduced the vectors and vector space. Now we're introducing an operator which acts, transforms this vector space in some in some other way it transforms one vector into another and simple laws like linearity associative associative law etc they are fine in this particular transformation not the commutative law all right so next lectures will be probably dedicated to again more properties of this linear transformation within and dimensional vector space that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, it's always useful to basically refresh yourself. Other than that, that's it. Thank you and good luck.